It's time for Halo Book Club. Welcome, Spartans, to another Halo Book Club episode, part of Podcast Evolved, your home for Halo. I'm your host today, David, and with me is the lovely one, the only, Chris Brown. God, I hope there's no more of me. I don't think the world could handle that. That's very true. I'm pretty, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure we're at max Chris to capacity. Yeah, one is enough. One out of one. Yep. Uh, today's book club is The Return from Halo Evolutions. Ooh. Uh, I had forgotten it existed, and I have no memory of ever reading it. Same. Um, But I know I must have at some stage. But uh, it's pretty cool, so we'll get into that in just a second. But before we go, uh, if you're new to the show, welcome. Podcast Evolves a host for a whole variety of different types of shows, all based around Halo, of course. We have the Halo Book Club, which is what we're listening to right now. It's also talk about our novels, short stories, comics, and whatnot. Uh, We have Halo Headlines, Builder Blocks, The Book Club, like I just said, and Mission Debrief. Um... We're currently doing a 20 for 20 series on YouTube, which is kind of like hopefully you're listening to this in, in real time. Otherwise, go check out YouTube. There's some stuff there. Uh, our, we have a partnership with HES Pro Talk, as Joss and Will. And they discuss all of the multiplayer stuff on the Halo competitive scene. They're pretty damn cool. So go check out those guys if you want to hear that stuff. You probably won't hear it on our main shows. Anyway, uh, speaking of our shows, all of them can be found on halopodcast.com um it's pretty damn cool go check us out it's a pretty damn good website if i do say so myself good work in um everything is up there please go check it out should you want to know more we have a patreon so guys you are fantastic you know who you are you are incredible you keep us going if you want to get in there uh patrons get early episodes they get unique swag they get access to our soundtrack that's right our own soundtrack um and you can learn everything you need to know over at patreon.com slash halo podcast evolved. And there we go. Now, our book club, like I said, is The Return. Ooh. Written by Kevin <laughs> Grace, who I have no memory of. I'm pretty sure this is his only, his only foray into the Halo universe. It is in, like I mentioned, contained the Halo evolutions, of which there are many versions of. Um, the original publisher was Tor. Simon & Schuster did a new edition in 2019. Um, it has a, It's in all the formats, both fake and real. I don't think... Is there an <laughs> audio for Evolutions? There, I think there is, actually, isn't there? I think there is, yeah, because yeah. Uh, Aaron's always talking about how they can't pronounce anything. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, they're all <laughs> over the shop. Um, so I don't know what version you have. Chris, you have the double edition, don't you? The two separate volumes? Or yeah, I have the two yeah. separate volumes. Yeah, me too. Um, so they came out in 2010, thereabouts. So anyway, that makes no real relevance to the story. Um, its length is 34 pages. It's quite short, um, but I think it's all the more enjoyable for it. And um, very quickly, um, the timeline is 25:59. So I had to do a bit of maths to figure that out, uh, which is kind of it's post Halo 3. That's kind of when the story takes place. Uh, and it's kind of obvious once the kind of story starts. Wouldn't 2559 uh, be like around Halo 5 time? I was thinking that too, but like, I wonder if this timeline is as exact, but let's just say it says six years it's since... Th- Halo. Oh, it's po- six years since Halo yeah. 3. I it guess says, that would work. It says six years since the Human Covenant War. So I just worked, okay, 2553, maybe 2552 is when that war ended. I think it was December 2552. So add on six and you get 2558, 2559, thereabouts. That seems um, really late. It does, doesn't it? Um, but this story technically could exist then um, because of where it's taking place. But it, I guess I guess let's get into it, right? The story is pretty much the story of a shipmaster unnamed um, who has come back to a planet that he pretty much devastated. Um, so it's kind of cool how it goes into the detail of, well, some detail of what it takes to actually annihilate a planet. Like, and they glass it entirely. Um, so this was a planet, the planet, a human colony world called Colo, and it's cool the way the story takes place. So a shipmaster has returned to a planet that he's annihilated to look back upon it. Uh, he feels great shame over what he did to the humans in the Human Covenant War, because since the reveal of the lies told by the prophets, he's his race and he feels himself too are like lost without a purpose. So he comes back to this planet, which was. Previously decided his great victory, he found this colony where he took it over, minimal losses, and a, he had the prestigious, prestigious right of being allowed to annihilate this planet. And he felt great about it at the time, 
and there's some cool flashbacks where it kind of describes like the whole process of that and how he felt which i thought was really cool yeah and and then it flashes back to like him being absolutely horrified when he goes into like a bunker and finds just skeletons everywhere uh of humans kind of kind of bunkering down and he thinks about like how pointless it all was given like the devastation that that he destroyed this planet essentially there's no life on it so he's kind of wandering around this planet trying to figure out what am i going to do with my life what do we do as a race we're losing our ships we had we pretty much had a focus at the end of the war you know revenge attacking the brutes he says there's some elites that are still ship masses going out attacking brutes he's kind of like oh fuck this we're kind of tired now we're fed up with war we our race doesn't have any kind of focus other than we were trained from early age to be warriors not scientists farmers engineers stuff that you need for like a, an actual civilization so like i said i think we've touched on this in the past like some it's great to see this kind of like breaking and this kind of like what the hell do we do when we've been like with the covenant for thousands of years doing this one function and now our society needs to like actually grow and think for itself um what did you think of it anyway uh, you know, it, it was interesting to kind of watch a Sanghili just kind of lament. And yeah. I don't know, he's almost in, he's like, it's like a mourning journey. He he lost, of course, we all know the Sanghili lost a lot of their identity when the Covenant fell. So it's mm. interesting seeing a Sanghili, like, exploring it by himself. Because most of the Sanghili just went to the planet and were like, whatever, we're just going to stay here until something happens. Uh, but yeah. he actually went out to try to find a purpose, and, you know, the biggest thing for him was, like, because, of course, the Sanghili are deeply religious, and they want to continue worshipping their gods, but they've never been able to co- even commune with their gods. They don't even know how to do that. They don't have any method of, like, individual prayer or anything like that. The covenant was always, the prophets spoke for the gods and told them what to it do. Took everything, yeah. So he... It's, it's interesting that, like... He he lo- like the, he realized the prophets were liars, but he still believes that the gods were the gods. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like he, it, it's interesting that like he doesn't go all the way and says there are no gods or blah blah blah. He he literally draws. Oh, they just lied about being able to talk to them, but they're still there. I still believe them, and that's I think that's kind of. Well, I feel like for I know some of the Singhali were just like fuck religion, <laughs> but you know for some of them, especially one yeah. like him who felt like he did all this religious things in his life and he was very yeah. god fearing it's probably hard to break yourself of those kind of just like expectancies and you know just just the basis of religion and stuff like that it's tr- hard to break through so i mean i think he still thinks by the way the story ends he obviously still thinks the forerunners are holy in some way as well because he's looking at four yeah, he look- so- he's looking for forerunner artifacts yeah, there's a pretty cool scene where, like, he comes across some jackals fighting humans uh, on this planet. And they're pretty much scavengers. It's not really revealed who or what, but the humans are digging into the glass uh, area over near what clearly looked like it was maybe a... Or sounded like it was some kind of research place or some kind of, like, place where art- artifacts were, foreign artifacts were kept. And they're kind of trying to retrieve them. Some Kegar come up, there's a fight. He sneaks up behind them and like brutally murders the kid and it's really <laughs> cool where like he just like stabs one with like this half blade he has he shoots one in the face back of the head with a carbine and then pretty much kicks the other one to death um it's pretty it, the descriptions are pretty brutal and quite satisfying so it, it's quite cool and then he finds the human there was two humans here they're kind of broken up they're all they're kind of dead one's kind of half dead he kind of goes rummaging for food. He's kind of really disappointed because he's been following uh, smoke in the sky for a few days, thinking like this will bring him this some kind of purpose. And he realizes it's just scavengers. He's kind of like, oh, this is kind of a bummer. Then he realizes what they were scavenging for and gets really excited. And he feels like, okay, I'll find the answers for myself. I'll go look for the forerunners myself. Uh, and then he calls in his ship, essentially, which is an orbit, just waiting for him, calls in reinforcements brings down a medic he's going to try and save this human's life and then interrogate the crap out of him um, to get the information which is kind of it kind of ends on a little bit of a high for him and kind of interesting you kind of want to know what happens next um, but unfortunately we never do yeah. um, but just, it's nice to think there's a little there's a thread there there's a ship master who his 
it's pretty much been this whole little short story is just a build up to who he is now. And I think they could easily pick up something here and make him into something. Oh yeah, definitely. Either found the Forerunners or still searching or something like that. Mm. It might be too close to what Jewel Mandama was doing though for them to reintroduce it back. It's almost like they took his concept yeah. and just made Jewel Mandama off of this concept. Yeah, that's true. It'd be, he could go a different way though and let's say Jewel was like super holy and like kind of made a cult essentially out of it and like tried to kind of almost make the covenant back again but they could go the opposite way with this guy they could be like he is just maybe he's made a bit more of a scientist maybe like by finding foreign artifacts he realizes they're maybe not as holy as he thought or maybe he could turn the other way which would be interesting but um i don't know but overall it was a pretty interesting story um yourself that you liked it too yeah i i like um i like these short stories that are in the covenant perspective i've always liked them it just kind of mm. paints them as more paints them as more characters than anything else because you know when this came out there wasn't a lot of covenant content in general True. we've gotten a lot more over the years but you know the covenant related stories are from the covenant's perspective uh was few and far between so it was nice to have something like this and I also, like you said at the start, I like the idea of a Sengheili feeling bad for what he did to the humans during the war. Of like, what, what what's the impact of the reveal of the lies? That like, you did something that you believed was holy, but it wasn't. It was just straight up slaughter. And the purpose behind it was pointless. Yeah. And achieved nothing. Yeah. So I like, mean, it's really interesting to see like how, how much guilt he feels towards humans for that. He doesn't feel that much guilt because he's like about to torture another one. Oh, so I mean, <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, he's ready. That's that's true. That's true. He definitely sees it as like you know a waste of time, energy, and resources. Definitely. Yeah. And a waste but, of a planet. He really he mourns the planet more than anything. I think, and just the, that's the buildings and the just the, the waste of, of you know life resources and energy and yeah resources yeah. and. It's definitely an interesting perspective because obviously there's a deep-seated hate for humans in general just because of the Covenant and stuff like that, but he still is looking for something. And he, he, I mean, if the humans were like, come join us or something like that, he might have considered it. Because this guy is super lost. <laughs> yeah. And the humans he found, he says, like, are scavengers, so he, he doesn't really... He's kind of looking down on them anyway. Not necessarily that these guys are friendly or nice humans, but we know nothing else about them. He just immediately says these are scavengers, like almost like they're scum, like kid gear scum. Um, but we don't really know anything else about them, unfortunately. But it's cool. Um, did you watch the motion comic as well? Yeah, I did. What I you think was I was surprised. It really hit every single story beat really, really well. It's pretty much yeah. like you could easily just not read it off of it out of evolutions and just watch the motion comic and know exactly what happened yeah it does the beats of the story i i happen i think i like the story a lot more than i like the comic i think it's i think it's better told from the perspective in the book than it is in the motion comic just because you get way more of his thoughts I yeah mean, because uh, he's just kind of wandering you get a lot of yeah uh, like half of it is just his wanderings and like musings as he's just walking no nah. i will say the music in the motion comic was pretty dope Oh, it was super dope. Yeah. I don't know where and, um, that came from, but it was great. Yeah, it was really cool. And the action sequence was pretty cool as well. Pretty bloody, bloody stuff. But no, it was good. It's good. Uh, I don't really have any trivia because there's almost no information I could find on the book or even the motion comic. But um, the motion comic was done by a artist known as One, who is a.k.a. Uh, Juan Richard Filez, Fil- Filias, who is a Spanish freelance artist and animator. Uh, this guy has also done Midnight in the Heart of Mytholtian and the Mona Lisa motion yeah. comics. So it's the same guy who did all three. Uh, but not the Headhunters. I think that was someone different. Um, so that's pretty much all I could find. And uh, there's nothing really else to it, guys. It's a really simple story. Really, really short. Motion comic is cool. I it has no work. connections to anything else. No, nothing at all. Um, there's only one real named character, and that's the Prophet. And he's like the Prophet of Conviction. And that was Yeah, but those are like a dime a dozen yeah during the covenant true. they all had like crazy names for like yeah very much so um that was a pretty was cool sequence actually the first time we saw one of the like lesser prophets in a halo thing the first time ever i don't know because there might have been more in the evolution stories i think there was one or two based around them or maybe a yeah, contact yeah. harvest i mean contact harvest did talk a lot about the different kinds of prophets and stuff but 
There might have been a few on first light as well. I can't remember. Anyway, um, what else I think? That's there. Another scene that is kind of cool. There's a flashback scene of the betrayal of like when they get told, oh, the covenant is breaking. We've been betrayed by the prophets. They're liars. They killed the council. And the shipmaster is like, oh, fuck. Get, get everybody into the hangar. I need to talk to them. And he goes to the prophet's quarters and like they try and kill him. He tries to shoot him. He just beats the crap out of him. And drags him in front of the crowd and just murders him <laughs> in front of everybody. I was like, this Public is execution. Cool. Yeah, yeah. That was amazing. The prophets are such dicks, so. <laughs> yeah, they are such dicks. But um, he also mentions here, which is interesting, and it's another point that I've seen other books bring up, that most of the prophets disappeared. Like, disappeared. Yeah. They weren't killed. Or they weren't like that. They literally, at the end of the, at the, end of the covenant, the breaking, they just disappeared. And it's like this kind of ominous. I think that's really interesting because we know where, where a few of them went due to kind of other short stories, but like the bulk of the race is totally missing. I can't wait. Yeah, I think it's this, been missing this, for a long time. Yeah, there's an interesting thread there for sure that Three for Three could do something with. But, yeah, um, because the the San Shaihem are super ancient. They were around mm. during the time of Forerunners and have the of super rich history. Um, yeah. So, I mean, they could do a lot with them. And obviously, like, not all of the San Shaihem are evil and crazy and manipulative like the prophets were but yeah they are super cool i mean uh is it divine wind that has like one of their super soldiers in it that's on the yeah for sure that's on the the cover art so that's really interesting that was from hunters in the dark i think had that one originally or was it shadow of intent i think it was i think it was shadow of intent which is another short story it's more of a novella yeah that was really damn cool and it had the 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 shipmaster not a shipmaster in it but um, that was really cool. Uh, okay, Chris, any closing thoughts? Uh, I think it's a good read if you just want to kind of read a one-off story that doesn't have many connections. That's from the perspective of the Covenant. Mm. I think this story is definitely worth a lot. It, it's worth reading a lot more than some of the other uh, Halo Evolution stories. <laughs> There's a lot of stinkers yeah. in there, but this one stands out as a really good one. Yeah, I really like it. Uh, it was a pleasure to recall this today where i didn't have to think of it before but it was pretty cool it was cool to read again okay guys uh there's our recommendation go check it out it's one of the many stories in Halo evolutions like we just said the motion comic is easily findable on youtube i couldn't find it in any official channels uh but it's very easy to find um thank you for joining us uh like we mentioned at the top of the show you can find all of our episodes on halopodcast.com and we also have links in there to our Discord, our Facebook, and Patreon page. And should you need any of our Xbox Live Club information, it's all there too. Uh, once again, special shout out to our patrons. Thank you guys so much. Patreon.com slash Halo Podcast Evolved to learn more. And finally, we have a voicemail function. I know, old school, but we got it. What? <laughs> uh, if you want to talk to us, leave a comment, say some Halo stuff, you are more than welcome to do so. It's 205 Evolved. That's 205-386-5833. And with that, I've been your host, David, and until next time, Evolved. Evolved.